You scared the shit out of me. I didn't see you come in, folks. Snuck up on me, you did. Welcome back to the house that never sleeps. Got a brand new guitar here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, the video is uh, going to be focused, as the title says, on uh, upgrading your acoustic guitar if you want to get a better guitar. Or if you're just on the market for a guitar and you, you, know, you don't know what to get or what to look for, I'm going to show you some things and uh, talk about some things that you really need to pay close attention to. Uh, <clears throat> anytime you're buying a guitar, these things are important. But, you know, it's just little things that I'm going to share with you to watch out for and uh, keep in mind when you're looking to upgrade your guitar to something better or uh, if you're just buying, you know, a new guitar or your first guitar even, whatever. Anyways, check this little Martin out. This is a Martin. It's called a uh, little Martin's what it's called. It's an LX1 model. Uh, I think it's uh, Taylor's competition to the the uh, baby guitar. I can't think what it's called. This is a cool little box. Uh, it's got a tusk saddle in it. And a Corian nut, of all things. Now, I don't know if you guys know about Gibson, uh, the Gibson uh, Custom Factory, and what they did with that Corian nut back in, I think from 2006 or 2007, up until 2015, I believe. They, uh, they built a bunch of guitars with a Plex machine. You can Google all this crap and look it up if, if you want to know more about it. I'm not going to get into detail, but... They epoxied that nut in a lot of those guitars at that through those years, and it was unserviceable. If you took a hammer and put a block up there and tried to knock the nut out the way I've showed you that I do, it works on almost every guitar. If you did one of those guitars that way, you would bust the, the uh, fingerboard, or you might even break the neck up here. I, there's no way it's epoxied solid down in, in through the guitar and finished over top of that. So, uh, you know, if you have a Gibson electric gu guitar from uh, the custom shop from about, I think, 2006 or seven up until 2015, don't ever try to knock the nut out. Make sure it's not one of those Corian nuts that are epoxy down in there because, you know, if anything ever goes wrong with the nuts, you gotta take it to a qualified uh, technician for through Gibson or send it back to them and what they do is just cut the top of that nut off and glue a cap onto it, a Corian, same material, let the glue dry, follow it all down and you can't even tell they did it and then they do their slot work and stuff but it's just a pain in the ass. It's just, I don't know why Gibson ever did it. I hope that's not the case. I hope Martin isn't going to that. Corian nuts are okay but if they're epoxied in there it's not okay. But anyways, I wanted to show you this. This came in the mail. It's a YouTube user, a brand new guitar. We're going to set it up and put a pick guard on it and some, some other things. Not in this video. This video, as I said, is about a whole bunch of other things. I got some uh, things I want to mention before we get to those. You may have seen this guitar before. If I don't drop it. On Jesse's channel. And I'm going to put a link down below down here to Jesse's channel. He's got a lot of good stuff going on. I won this guitar from his channel and he's got an, an acoustic guitar up for giveaway right now. Uh, you have until Christmas Day morning, I think, to enter it. So go to his channel, check out the contest, uh, get your entry in if you want it. Jesse, thanks, man. Uh, this is cool. <laughs> 
I got some ideas I want to run by you guys. I've mentioned this a time or two before. People seem like they kind of like the idea. Uh, you know, I've always kind of wanted another electric guitar to keep around here. My son has a house full of them. Like, we need another one, like a hole in the head. But, you know, I thought maybe this would be a, a guitar that we, us, in the guitar community could share. I mentioned doing this before. Maybe I'll put a, uh, I don't know, the he said the pickups and stuff is good. It needs a switch. Obviously needs some kind of tailpiece here. Uh... Maybe I'll put a Floyd Rose in it and send it to uh, Nelson, you know, and let him, I don't know, let him wire it up or whatever he wants to do to it. And Nelson send it to uh, anyone else that wants to get involved. If you guys put in the comments down below if you'd like to, you know, give this a shot. I think it'd be fun, man. Pass it around between all us guys that fool with this stuff. And get this baby going again. I can just I could do it, you know, myself and keep it here. But I thought of this idea before of us guys that work on guitars passing one around and everybody do a little something to it. And even when it's done and complete and playable, you know, I, I would donate it to the guitar community here if you guys are interested and you want to do this. And and when it's done and it's playable, we'll just keep passing it around and making videos with it until something breaks and one of us will fix it and play it and send it to the next guy. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to do that or not, if anyone's interested in doing it. If we get enough people, I'll, I don't know, I'll do something to it and send it to the next guy. He can add his magic and send it to whoever else. And like I say, once we get it in playing condition again, uh, We'll just keep it in the guitar. It'll belong to the YouTube guitar community. Someone in this community will have it all the time. And eventually, you guys, you guys on the, eventually, you guys on the other side of the big pond, you know, somebody will send it to you. You guys will all get a chance at it too if you want to do this. So well, let me know in the comments if anyone's interested. Post up, and I'll figure out what I'm going to do and do it and uh, send it to you. And I guess if not, I'll, I'm going to keep it, fix it up for me. <laughs> So, okay, that's that. Let me, uh, I gotta get some stuff here. Hold on. And we're gonna talk about upgrading your guitar. I get so many requests on things that, uh, all kind of stuff, you know. And this was one question that a whole lot of people have been asking me to do a video on. So, that's what this video is gonna be about. We got a lot of stuff to cover, so I've done, killed enough time, I think. I'm gonna <laughs> try to run through it kind of quick, so. Hold on. Welcome back, folks. Yeah, I was just thinking it must be little guitar month. I got this little tiny Gibson here in the mail today. Or Martin. It's a Martin. I got it in the mail today. Uh, you saw the Regal little guitar. Uh, the little guitar Ginger sent me. Little tiny Martin. Uh, before that was a little uh, Gibson LG2. I don't know what's up with little guitars. And uh, recently, about... Uh, four or so right there that I've got in. So let's talk about uh, you upgrading your guitar. You, you got a guitar and you want a better one. Or let's say you uh, are going to buy your first one. And you know, it, it depends a lot obviously on if you want a really good guitar or you want one that sucks or just, you know, a learner's guitar maybe that's not so expensive but a decent one. That's Savannah that I had in here a while back. I got a video up of it. That was a good guitar for the money. Man, you couldn't beat it. And it sounded awesome. It played like an electric guitar too. Uh, so it depends on several things, you know. What you have and what you want, how well you play or how bad you play or if you're just beginning. Several factors that you should, uh, you know, consider before going out and buying another guitar or a guitar. So, okay, any time that you are going to purchase an acoustic guitar, uh, one of the main things that I would look for, well, this guitar doesn't have binding on it. For those of you who don't know what binding is, it's those white or black strips. You usually see them run all around the uh, back and the sides and the top. You know what I'm talking about? You want to look along that binding really close. I mean, get down on it and inspect it completely all the way around on the front and on the back if it has binding on the back. Some of them have 
binding up the uh, neck beside the fingerboard look at all of that make sure none of the binding is coming loose that's not such a big deal but if bindings coming loose here you know it's possible the wood is coming loose you know say binding was coming loose unglued right there you know that would indicate that maybe just maybe the side and the top here is also coming apart and you probably wouldn't want that guitar you know what I mean or same thing on the back so check the binding obviously you want to look at the top the sides and the back for any cracks uh, I'll show you some pictures uh, throughout this thing you can see what I'm talking about cracks are a big no-no you don't want cracks uh, open cracks allow you know the elements to get inside underneath the finish and and the, it's not see if it's not sealed the wood it, those cracks only grow they get bigger or dents like this a dent in uh, say the top of your guitar just a tiny dent you know all the elements and skin oil and uh, the environment and, and the moisture everything smoke you know everything over time and years gets inside of that dent and it gets bigger you know and then you start having problems so you know depending on uh, how much of a perfectionist you are you know something like that I wouldn't say not get the guitar because it's got a little dent in the front of it but uh, you know know it's there note it be conscious conscious of it and just keep an eye on it you know so cracks uh, dents like that and frets, you want to check the frets out. I got notes here because I'm going to try to cover a lot of things. You want to check the frets out. Make sure they are not uh, big dents worn in the frets, you know, under each string. If it needs a fret job, you should. Uh, you could still buy the guitar, but you're going to have to pay for a fret job. Or fret dressing, maybe a complete fret job, who knows, depending on how bad it is. Notice those frets, though. Look at them. Feel up and down the sides of the, uh, if it has binding or not, feel up and down the neck. If you feel any sharp frets sticking out, you, know, you might want to take that into consideration. Now, if it's an expensive guitar and you're going to shell out like, uh, you know, several hundred bucks or several thousand bucks, I would recommend you look at the braces inside of that guitar. Take a thing like this. Any kind of a mirror, it doesn't have to be like this, but this is telescopic. I can get back in there and look around, you know. Look at the bridge plate. That's important, too. See how badly that bridge plate, if it has any wear where the strings, balls hit it. Um, check the uh, voicing bars, the tone bars, the X brace, the back braces. You know, look at all those braces, uh, specifically the ends of the braces, because that's usually when they come unglued, not always, but usually it's either on one or the other end or both ends of a brace. So pay, pay special attention to those areas. Look at the bridge pins. And just kind of notice if they're all, you know, set down in there about even or not. If they're not, then there's probably some kind of something funky that's going on there. Take, uh, as I've showed you before, take a piece of paper and see if you can stick that paper underneath the bridge anywhere. You can see this one will not go under there. If that bridge is pulled up the tiniest bit and you can get a piece of paper under there, that's a huge concern. You're probably going to have to have the bridge cut off and glued back on properly. Also, look at the belly every acoustic guitar it happens over time every one of them eventually wooden ones <laughs> will belly up a little bit some of them a whole lot if you humidify the instrument properly and keep it humidified that's a lot less chance of that ever happening or braces coming loose I mean if you, you know if you take care of the instrument it'll take care of you probably as long as you live but if not you're going to get a belly here look at that Make sure there's no huge belly. A little bit of a belly is okay. I would even go as far as to say do the uh, the straight edge thing. Put 
a straight edge on the on a flat neck and see if the edge comes down and slides over top of the bridge to the saddle like that without having to raise the edge up. You want to make sure the plane of the bridge is nearly identical to the plane of the fretboard. And like I say again, this is especially if you're you know shelling out some big bucks. Uh, if you put that straight edge on there and it comes down and you got to lift it up a wee little bit, you're probably going to be okay. But if it comes down and you got to raise it up a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch to get it to go over the top of the bridge, you're probably going to have to have a neck reset pretty soon. Or maybe beyond that point already. Uh, okay, tuners. Check the keys. Check the tuners out. Just uh, see if they work. Sometimes, you know, teeth will get broke off of them. They'll get slack in them. Or they'll just, the bushings will wear out in there. They'll get wobbly and won't stay in tune. Check all the tuners. Uh, you know, basically just turn them, look at them, and see uh, if, you know, if they meet your requirements or not. All right. Also, check the neck joint. You know, it, tune it up to pitch. This is not up to pitch, by the way. Uh, I know that. <laughs> uh, tune it up to pitch. Check the neck joint. Look in this area. Look at the heel back here where it meets the body. Look at this area. Look at the fingerboard extension where it is glued to the top on both sides. And make sure all of that, you know, is like it should be. There again, especially if you're shelling out several thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, there again, you know, it, it depends on uh, if you're, if you're going to buy like a $5,000 Martin, you know, and it's five years old. I wouldn't worry a whole lot about these things, but you know, if it's much older than that, and you really want to look that guitar over before shelling out that much money for it, or I would, I do. Uh, the type of wood is something that you probably should consider. Now, it's a lot of people tell you the top is all that matters. The back and sides don't make any difference. This has got uh, birch laminate neck. I don't know if you can see that or not. The top, I think, is spruce and the back is mahogany. The type of wood makes all of the difference. The back and the sides are just as important as the top. If you really going for the very best acoustic guitar sound you're going to spend the money and it's because usually it will have a Sitka spruce top and it'll have Brazilian rosewood for the back and sides I mean you know if the back and sides didn't matter why would companies like uh, big companies like Taylor and Martin buy up all the Brazilian rosewood to the point it's almost extinct now. Same way with East Indian rosewood. They bought all of that up. Now they're just going with uh, Ind Indian rosewood. Doesn't matter if it's from the east side. You know, those companies have been building guitars for over a hundred years, Martin has, and they wouldn't invest in all that rosewood if the back and sides did not matter. Okay? So the wood makes all of the difference in the world. Every piece of wood, and you know, I mean the braces, they use uh, spruce a lot in, in a lot of the bracing and more expensive high-end guitars. Uh, so the type of wood does make a big difference. Tone wood doesn't mean shit in electric guitars. It means everything in acoustic. I mean the neck, the back, the sides, the top, the bridge, the braces, everything counts when it comes to acoustic guitar. The woods do matter. Every piece of wood that uh, is connected to that. Okay, truss rod. This one has one, by the way. If I was really serious and going to shell out big bucks for a guitar, even though it played right or maybe it was lacking a little bit in the action, 
I would check that truss rod or I'd take it to a luthier or a technician or someone who knew what they're doing check the truss rod it only takes one minute man to stick a wrench in there and turn that and look at the neck and see if anything's happening if it's not if the truss rod is broken or seized and you can't turn it you know you probably don't want to put that much money in the guitar you should get a discount or something all right string buzz there again look at the frets play every note on the guitar every fret on it at least down you know as far as you're figuring on playing it make sure it doesn't buzz out anywhere you know you could have a high fret one high fret on one under one string also look at the frets along the, the uh, sides of the, the fingerboard and make sure none of those are pulled up or away from the fingerboard uh, some of the Binded fingerboards you can't see that very well, but with no binding you can see if a frets pulled up You're going to be able to see it and they do come loose and pull up sometimes so pay attention to that uh, What else if it has electronics a lot of guitars are coming with some nice electronics now I have one of my Martins set up with a Fishman uh, What is that thing? ellipse or something I'm gonna do another review on it I did one long time ago but it was a crappy one I'm gonna do a better one but if it has electronics check those electronics out hook it into a sound system uh, usually those electronics and acoustic guitars are not made to hook into an electric guitar amp they just sound like funky sound man and it's not made for that they're almost always made to hook into a sound system and you know to get the true sound of the guitar if it's a good system but yeah check the electronics out hook it up you know fiddle with the knobs or equalize EQ tuner or whatever it may be built into it check all that stuff out too uh, what else hmm what else hold on let me gather my thoughts it's a small gathering it won't take long should have mentioned too here Check out the nut on the guitar you are going to buy. Now you see, I hope you can see this. Look at that big string. It's down inside the slot a little bit farther than I like. Uh, if you can see it. You should only have like half of the diameter of the string uh, sticking up out of the nut slot. You know that nut wears when you tighten those keys and loosen them and change strings and you're always you know, just dragging the strings through it back and forth. That wears and eventually your nut action may get too low and you get some buzzing up here on the first fret. The saddle so much you don't have to worry about that, but you do want to make sure there's plenty of saddle sticking up higher than the bridge <laughs> itself is. Uh, this is one of those br rich light bridges, by the way. That's not rosewood or ebony. It looks like it, but it's not. But check the saddle. You know, Make sure you have plenty of saddle height right here. And that will give you room to lower your action if you, know, if you need to later on down the road. Uh, one other thing. A lot of guitars, will the finish on them will shatter like glass and you can only see it if you hold it toward a light a certain way and look at that now if you get a guitar like that there again all those tiny little old hairline cracks that you can only see under a bright light in a certain uh, position that allows the elements to get in guys it uh, it will work on your guitar eventually you're gonna have problems with that if you let, let it go it's only gonna get worse because those cracks are not sealed a lot of times if a guitar is really dried out and you hum humidify it too fast and, and the wood moves and swells up and gets fatter when you humidify it and a lot of times it will cause the finish to just 
shatter all over. So if it's a high dollar guitar and you're putting a lot of bucks into it, you know, hold that thing up to the light. Look at it really close. Oh, yeah. Usually a new guitar doesn't come with a strap button. If you're paying big bucks for it, tell them to put a strap button in there for you at that price, you know. They, they almost always have the butt pit plug, <laughs> I guess is what you'd call it, the end pin or whatever. But they almost always never have the one up here. And don't put, don't put a strap on this button back here and then tie it around up here because what that does is put all the weight of the guitar on your neck. It's, uh, it's just a, a shitty idea, you know, on a good guitar especially. You don't want to hang that like that for all the hours that you're standing up playing music. Put your strap down here where it's supposed to go on acoustic guitars. And like I say, if there's not a button there, have them put one in for you before you buy the thing. Because uh, you don't want that weight hanging from all the way up here behind the nut and back here pulling down you know in this area this area takes a beating enough over time so i hope i'm recording yeah i think it still is battery's getting low so i gotta wrap this up pretty quick so uh there's a million other things we could go over but that's the basic main important stuff that i can think of if anyone uh, you know can think of anything else that you might want to consider when you're upgrading your guitar put it in the comments down below so everyone will see it and know because I'm sure I'm leaving a bunch of stuff out I just heard the heat kick on it's like uh, 25 degrees outside winter has hit full force here tonight we got like three inches of snow on the ground right now and it's still ripping it down and the wind blowing surprise the power hasn't went off yet it's flickered a few times but <laughs> you know how I feel about uh, yeah, uh, we're not even going to talk about the power company. Screw them. Uh, but yeah, man, post in the comments below about this guitar. You know, if you would like, I'll donate this guitar to the YouTube guitar community. We'll pass it around. We'll all build it together. And like I say, if we get it in play, in, we will get it in play in condition. And it'll still be the YouTube guitar community's guitar. Somebody can keep it, play it. Send it to the next guy, let him play it, and whatever wears out, you know, we, we'll fix it. And just pass it around amongst ourselves until whatever, you know. If you want to do it, put it in the comments below that you're interested. And uh, if there's enough of us, or maybe if there's only three of us, us three can start it, the thing anyway. If not, I have myself another electric guitar. I'm going to fix it up for me you know if if that doesn't happen but uh, yeah I'm gonna put links down here to Jesse's channel I got this he I won it from his channel he's got a he's a great guy he's got a good thing going on right now and like I say if you go there right now and uh, enter enter the contest that he's giving away that acoustic guitar I mean uh, you know it's not gonna cost you anything to enter it and you may get a free guitar out of it I worked on that guitar it needs some work yet to it like he said, it would make a great slide guitar, and that's a shame because it has got frets to die for. I mean, I really did those frets up nice. So that's one thing it does have in its favor, and it sounds pretty good, too. And it's free. So go check Jesse's channel out. Uh, enter the contest if you like. Let me know what you, uh, if you're interested in doing that with this guitar, the Series 10, and we'll get that underway. And uh, I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas again. I don't know if I'll put up another video before Christmas or not because it is just crazy busy here right now. Well, it has been all month. It's getting busier, I think. I got more crap coming in the mail than the government, man. And most of it's guitar stuff or guitars. I don't mind it at all. I like that. Uh, send me yours if you want it fixed. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching and gals. Uh, thanks to, to the new subscribers. I'm seeing that count go up. Uh, I'm not sure yet about my prediction I made about the traffic, but it's gone up. It's just really slow about it. I thought it might have went up a little more by now, but it's slowly getting a little bit more each day. I can tell that from the subscriber count. So thank all you new subscribers, man. 
hang around. We have a lot of fun here. A lot of madness. A lot of sickness. <laughs> a lot of laughs, too. But uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you uh, hanging around, signing up. And I appreciate the old subscribers hanging around, putting up with all my shit. And uh, I try to keep it entertaining for you after Christmas. It will get real entertaining and funny and stuff again. So cheers to you all. Literally. Cheers to you. I'm going to go sip a cool one and play that little Martin guitar a while, I think. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers. Oh, just a few more things. I always forget stuff, man. I always do that. Check the action. Of all things, check the action on the guitar you are about to spend big bucks on. Play it, you know, see if it feels right to you. If it's easy or hard to chord, you don't want it. If it's hard to chord, of course, or you want it fixed if you buy it. Harmonics, the intonation. Make sure the intonation's right on it. I just keep thinking of stuff. I know when I sh shut the camera down, I'm going to think of stuff again. Like I say, if you guys can think of anything else that I've left out, put it in the comments below so everyone can read this and get tips on buying new guitars or upgrading their old guitars or whatever you know, whatever the case might be for that individual. Anyways, thanks guys. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Merry Christmas. One more thing and I promise I'm going to shut up after this. Sound. Sound. The most important factor of them all. If that guitar speaks to you or if it vibrates against your belly and just shakes all over when you play it, it's probably a good guitar. That old Blue Ridge that I play it with good strings on it and set up right, man, it nearly vibrates off of your lap. I walked into a local music store one day, I think to get strings or something. I saw that Blue Ridge, picked it up, hit a chord on it, and I knew right, right then that guitar was going home with me that day, and, you know, unless it was ridiculously priced. I showed you the big crack in the back of it from it being so dry you know someone never took good care of it but that uh, sound yeah man listen to the guitar you're about to buy uh, and feel it don't only listen but feel it a good good expensive acoustic guitar it will vibrate again your chest and your belly you'll feel it vibrating in your arms you'll feel vibrations up the neck on the on the headstock look what a beautiful headstock that is by the way you can see that but yeah, sound is everything. That's the whole reason, you know, you're going to play the guitar. This thing really sounds good. It's not tuned up to pitch, but it'll sound better once I set it up and get it tuned up to pitch. We're going to put a, a pick guard on it for him. But uh, yeah. The sound is everything. Like I said, the type of woods, that's where that comes in. Tone woods are a major factor in acoustic guitars. Every piece of wood, the braces, the X brace, the voicing bars, the tone bars, the back, the front, the sides, the back braces, the neck, all of that contributes or takes away from that guitar sound. So do consider the woods. Like I said, uh, Martin and Taylor wouldn't bought up all of the Brazilian rosewood until it was extinct if the back and sides didn't matter. And not just Martin and Taylor, a lot of big companies do it, the ones in the know. So anyways, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Cheers to you, and I'll see you uh, real soon. to wish all you guys and gals a Merry Christmas. She's not very happy right now. So Merry Christmas, folks. Tell them, I love you. I think she's mad. <laughs> Say I love you. Say I love you. No. I love no. you. No. I love you. No. I love you. Good girl. No. What? 
I love you. Good, that's good enough. Merry Christmas, folks.